Unions have warned of thousands of job losses at the cash trap local councils. I'm going to read into this more exclusive from iNews, guys. Let's go. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Elite here with an exclusive for my news with the headline of Unions warn of thousands of job losses at cash strapped local councils. As voluntary redundancy programs will come to an end, fear rises that many more council workers will lose their jobs as town hall seeks cuts to avoid bankruptcy. This is heartbreaking to say the least, guys. I mean, it's already it's, it's hard enough when um, people out there are losing their jobs. But we're talking about councils, the councils that make things run for us, workers who do a lot as it is, and we're talking about letting them go and ushering more responsibility on more council work on more council workers as if they don't have enough on their plate as it is. And this is simply because of the debts that they have and of no way of paying them back, I believe. Um, this is a horrifying situation, to say the least. Um, I hope nobody loses their jobs, but I fear that's where we're going, guys. Trade unions are warning of thousands of job cuts across local councils as authorities attempt to avoid bankruptcy. As well as tens of millions in cuts to local services, authorities across England are now looking to redundancies and a pause on filling vacancies to make up the millions more. With dozens of local councils facing tough choices to avoid following Birmingham City's council into bankruptcy, <coughs> unions are also fearful of pay cuts into workers in frontline services such as refuse, refuse collection. Yeah, if they're not going to let them go, they're going to cut their wages in order to help pay back their debts. And in my opinion, they should not be paying back those debts. I think the government needs to, to step in to ensure that the councils have sufficient money. I don't think it's it's right that services that local services should suffer um, people will suffer as a result of this in the long term short and long term on the cash bib a national lead officer of the unite union told the i we are certainly looking at thousands of job cuts in local government this isn't something that's happened overnight this is something that has been building over the years due to the lack of adequate funding from central government We've had years of cuts to local budgets where we have led to services being cut to the bone. This is a result of austerity, guys. Um, a reminder of, of the damage that austerity was imposed in us from 2010 onwards under the Conservative uh, Lib Dem coalition government originally before the Conservatives gained a majority. Um, yeah, we, we, we suffered. We were going to suffer as a result of those austerities. Um, communities have suffered um, our NHS has suffered less police forces everything has suffered as a result of this and you know the only people who have benefited over the last 13 years have been the rich the wealthy the bankers they've all benefited while we haven't and we've not only have we not benefited we've suffered we've we've gone back um, and it's 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 a terrible thing that is for sure you know, services being cut to the bone. No, that's not how you run a country. You don't cut it to the bone. It's, it's just, just not, this is not the way to do things. Mr. Kapash, um, apologies if I mispronounced the name, added that many local authorities had already reduced staff numbers through offering early retirement via voluntary, voluntary redundancies and by not filling vacant positions. But we're getting to the end. But we're getting to the end of that. He added, "We are now looking at job cuts of people who do not want to leave their jobs." Yeah, that's the thing. People are going to lose their jobs, whether they like it or not, at no fault of their own, guys. The local government association claims authorities are facing a three billion funding gap over the two next over the two years. Mike Short, head of local union government at Unison, said staff levels have already been cut to the bone in a desperate attempt to balance the books. But more services will be lost and job access across the country unless the government intervenes with a significant extra funding, not just for those authorities on the brink, but for every single council. Sharon Wild, a national officer at the GMB, added, 
QMB is extremely concerned about the potential for wide-ranging local government job cuts. This is why one of the main reasons we are campaigning for a fully funded pay increases for local government workers. Among those forced, into, forced to look at cutting jobs within councils by cancelling private sector service contracts are Bradford, Devon, Guildford, Hastings, Kent and Southampton. That's a lot down in the south there. All six are said to be at risk of issuing a section 114 notice which would mean they are effectively bankrupt. Spokeswoman for Hastings Borough Council, which has been hit by a sharp increase in the demand for temporary housing, said job cuts were inevitable. But we do not we do not know the scale yet, she added. We are significantly diverting resources where we can support housing colleagues with addressing our fundamental problems. Numbers of people in temporary accommodation for whom there is no affordable move on accommodation. In Devon, the County Council is targeting ten million pounds of savings by cutting child service as well as adult care, transport spending and environmental projects. Child service, adult care, transport spending, environmental project. It is just horrible. <sighs> Spokeswoman for Kent County Council added that part of its drive to make savings is, expect, is expected to result in holding vacancies. The Department for Leveling Up Housing and Community spokesperson said local authorities have seen an increase in core spending of up to 5.1 billion or 9.4% in cash terms in 2022-2023 with almost 60 billion available for local government in England. We are ready to speak to any council that has concern about its ability to manage its finances or face pressure that is not planned for. This is the same rhetoric you hear all the time from the major government. Like We have increased spending, we have invested this. You hear that same crap all the time from the, from the, from the government but just will not deal, but just will not accept that they are responsible for any of this, guys. They don't consider themselves responsible for any of it. It is so infuriating when we talk about this, guys. Um, I talk about these local councils and those who are going through this, guys. You know, yes, some of these councils are at fault because not managing the balance of the books. That there, there can be that argument. But at the same time, when you don't have enough money for the basic necessity needs, what are they supposed to do? What are they supposed to do, guys? Um, it doesn't matter how sensible you are with cash. If you don't have enough money, um, what are you meant to do? Um, it's so easy for people to blame the councils. Like I say, oh, because it's a Labour-run council, it must be Labour's fault. When they just, that's what some people will feel. Some people will feel in their areas when they are not getting their bins collected or something's not being dealt with by their councils, they're going to blame the party who is in charge in that area, whether it's not just Conservative, but whether it's Labour, Lib Dem, whatever. They will blame them when, in fact, it is pretty much down to the, to the British government, Conservative government in Westminster, because they are the ones who hold the money. And if you ever, and I'm sick and tired of this, this rhetoric of, um, they don't have the money or there's a fear of inflation. It's absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Who cares about inflation? Who cares about uh, about the, the about that when people are suffering, people are dying, basic necessity needs are not being met for people? You know, ensure that the British public are looked after, then worry about the costs later. Yeah, yes, of course, we always have to worry about numbers and costs, but that's not a priority right now. People are screaming for help out there and they're getting nothing from this government. And they expect charities and third parties and private sectors to do everything for them. And it's pathetic. It really is pathetic because that is their job. That is what the, we as a nation voted. We voted for them to run the country, not for them to rip up the taxpayers' money, take it for themselves and give it to their friends. What do you guys think about these cash-strapped local councils, guys? What do you suggest that they can do to help? Do you have any ideas or suggestions in the comments down below that can that we that can help? Um, would you agree with me that perhaps maybe offering pay cuts rather than total full redundancy is probably the best solution? So at least they're getting some pay, if not uh, rather than losing their pay outright. Let me know down in the comments section what you guys think of this current situation. 
like share and subscribe as always guys thank you very much for watching i really do appreciate it check out some of my other links down there if you can and i hope to catch you all very very soon